All right, so we're looking at some inventory valuations and the two inventory valuations that we're going to look at are through the periodic system, firstly, and we're going to do first in, first out, and then we're going to do average cost. So what we've been given here is been given some information and it's told me that Dubbo Electronics and Astro Condensers um, have a beginning inventory of 100 units and that gives them a value of $1,000, so my unit cost is $10. We do some more purchases throughout the period and we find that, this is periodic system, that we've got 1,000 units that is available for sale at a cost of $12,000. Now, during the year, they sold some units and there's 550 of them. Uh, let me just see if that focus works a bit better. Yeah, that's a bit better. So we sold 550 and my inventory on hand is then 450 units. So what we want to do is we want to be able to determine some costs. So which costs should be allocated to units sold and which costs should be allocated to ending inventory. So we're going to use the first in first out method. Uh, and what we're calculating is my ending inventory. Now if we've got a thousand units available for sale, and I've sold 550 of them, that must mean there's 450 left. And using the first in, first out method, these were the first through the door. So the first in, first out method works like this goes in, comes out. So we push them in the indoor and they come out the outdoor. So these, this 100 would have been the first in, then that 200, and then this 300 and then this 400. So what would be left at the end of 450 units must be this 400 here plus 50 from there. So if I write that out, I'm going to write out that in November 27th of that purchase I still got 400 units at a unit cost of $13 each which gives me $5,200. And as we've already mentioned, I've got um, 50 of these 300, so I've got three, uh, 50 at a cost of $12 each, which gives me 600. So my ending inventory must be $5,800. That's my ending inventory. Calculated. So let's look on page two. Now what we want to try and do is we want to try and calculate cost of goods sold or cost of sales. Now the cost of goods available for sale, we mentioned earlier that my cost of goods available for sale was $12,000. So I've purchased all these through the period and that's what I've got available for sale. So I've got $12,000. Now my, less my ending inventory, we saw that my ending inventory was 5800 So I've got my 5800 here. And that should then leave me with cost of, sale, cost of goods sold of $6,200. Now I could, that's one way of working it out. The other way of working it out is actually going, okay, what was, um, what was my movements of inventory? Right. So if I look at this, this is a, a similar schedule, but we're going to look at the 550 units that were sold during the period. So I must have sold this 100 first, because that's on the 1st of January. I had 100 units at $10 per unit, which gives me $1,000. I've got 200 units here that I purchased on the 15th of April. I purchased those at $11 each, which gives me $2,200. And I've sold 250, because what I'm looking for here is a total of 550. So I must have sold another 250. So that 550 is just there. And I've purchased those at $12 a piece, which leaves me with, uh, what is it, uh, 3,000. And that 3,000, if I add up that, I get 1,000, 3,200, 6,200. Which is the sim a similar way to calculate the cost of sales that we sa same number that we had up there. 
Now that's using my FIFO system, first in, first out. Let's have a look at this system again, we'll look at a different cost flow method, and this time we're going to use average cost. Now my average cost assumes that all my goods are similar, and that is we can calculate cost of sales using a weighted average cost of uh, inventory. So what we look at here is my goods that were available for sale was 12,000, we already know that. There was 1,000 units that were available for sale, so that gives me an average cost of $12. So let's apply that then to our, now that's just a textbook, what we're going to do is go through the steps of how this comes about. And so what I've got is from previous page, I've got $12,000, 1,000 units, $12 is my average cost. My ending inventory, how much was my ending inventory? There was 450 units as my ending inventory. And we got that from page number one. So 450 units. The unit cost is $12 each. So therefore, um, my ending inventory is $5,000. $400. So now, if I, that's calculating my ending inventory. If I want to calculate my cost of goods sold, my cost of goods available for sale, well, we already know it's 12000 So if I have 12000 here, my ending inventory we've just calculated to be 5400 So that means my cost of goods sold is 6600 so a little bit different from the FIFO method, but that's what different cost flow methods generate. They give slightly different answers. And of course you're picking what's suitable to your business. Now the other thing that we need to, could have done, we could have just gone, okay, 550 units, which is what we sold during the year, multiplied by my $12 equals $6,600. That's the other way to calculate it. Everyone okay with all that? Seem too easy? Should I put this question on the test? Oh, no response. All right, I'll make my mind up then. Not to be influenced by you guys. All right, let's have a look now. That was the last method we used was using the periodic method. This time we're gonna start looking at it from the perpetual inventory system. So perpetual just means ongoing. And we're not gonna make it too complicated. We're going to have a sale at one particular point during the period. And you might recognise that some numbers look similar in the cost flow methods between periodic and perpetual. Um, but first things first, we're going to do first in, first out. Okay. Now, on the 1st of January, we didn't have any purchases, didn't have any sales, but we had 100 units at $10 a unit, which gave me $1,000. Uh, on the 15th of April, I purchased another 200 units at $11, which gives me 2,200. So what I've got now is I've got 100 at 10, I've got 200 at 11, and that, so that's 2,200, and that's 1,000. So therefore, I've got an inventory balance of $3,200. On the 24th of August, I purchased another 300 units at $12 or 3,600. So now I've got in my inventory, I've got 100 at 10, I've got 200 at 11, and now I add my 300 at 12. So that's 1,000, that's 2,200, and this is 3,600, which gives me, what was it, $6,800. So is my inventory balance. Now on the 10th of September I'm making a sale into my sales column. I'm making a sale and I'm selling um, 550 units. So that's what that adds up to, 550. And we're going to put a value of that in, on that inventory or the cost on that inventory was $6,200. Now you can see that I'm using my first in first out method. The 100 that I had in my balance at the start of the period's there, my second purchase of 200, and then I've got 250 of these 300 here, which gives me 6,200, 
which leaves me with a balance of 50 units because I've got 600 here. So I've got 50 and I'm going to put a value of $12 each on those which gives me $600. And then my last purchase is 400 units at $13 for a cost of 5200 So that means I've got 50 at $12. I've got 400 at $13, um, so that's 600, this is 5,200, so that gives me $5,800. Now that's very similar to the, the FIFO method in periodic. So, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, does anyone want me to let, I can hear some fingers tapping on keyboards and I can see some pens wiggling, so I'll just pause for a little moment. Pop my pen down. Uh, so now we're going to do the same thing, but using uh, the perpetual system, a uh, perpetual um, system. But the cost flow method is going to be um, average cost. All right. So last, my last thing. Now we had a balance at the start, so nothing's changed there. Of 100 units at $10 a unit gave me a balance of a thousand. Now my average cost, I'm going to add a little column over here. My average cost is calculated by a thousand divided by 100 equals ten dollars per unit. That's my average cost. Uh, we purchase another 300, well, sorry, we purchase another 200 units at 2,200 so my cost of my inventory is 1000 plus 2200 which gives me 3200 and my average cost now is 3200 divided by the 300 units I've got in inventory which gives us a cost of $10 or not a cost of but average cost of $10.67 just put a little bit bigger dot $10.67 on the 24th of August, I purchased another 300 units of $12, which gives me 3,600. 3,200 plus my 3,600 gives me 6,800. And now I've got 600 units in inventory, so I've got a cost of 6,800 divided by 600 gives me an average cost of $11.33. Now we make our sale, and our sales are 550 units. I'm going to move them out of inventory at the average cost of $11.33. Which means that I'm moving the value of 6,233 out of inventory. So 6,800 less my 6,233 gives me 5, um, $567. And my average cost is I've got um, 50 units um, in, hang on, so I've got 5,600, no, 5,000. What's happening with my mind this morning? $567, i got 50 units in inventory, and it still is a balance of $11.33 as my average cost. Then the last item we purchase is 400 units at an average cost of $13 a unit, or not an average cost, but a cost of $13 a unit, or 5,200. I'm going to add my 5,567 to my 5,200, and it's going to give me $5,767. And it means that I've got uh, $5,767 in cost, and I've got 450 units, so it's going to give me an average cost of $12.82. And that's how we calculate our average cost.